Hello, Professor BRB here. This will be the first in a series of lessons on creating interactive documents in Adobe InDesign CS6. Uh, first, we're going to set our document up by going to File, New, Document. Then we're going to choose the imprint, the intent of web. That will set our page size to 800 by 600 pixels and we'll um, set our rulers here in pixels and also our color mode will be set to RGB. We're going to make sure that we are in the digital publishing workspace. And the first thing we will be doing is setting up our layers, which we'll be using in future lessons. So go to your layers panel and rename your first layer guides. And we can make that a non-printing layer and click OK. Our second layer will be background. Okay. Our third layer will be images. And our next layer will be type. And our top layer will be navigation. I'm going to go to my master pages and change the name of a master by going to master options. And I'm just going to call that navigation. And that means I'll be basing all future master pages or any pages that are going to have navigation will be based on this master page. So I'm going to go down here and navigate to the navigation master page and make sure that I'm in my navigation layer, which I am. And what we're going to be doing is creating a simple page navigation system that will look like this. It's going to have a go to first page button, a go to previous page, a go to next page button, and a go to last page button. So let's zoom in on the lower right portion of our page where I'm going to place the navigation system. And first thing we're going to do is go to the rectangle frame tool and draw a square. I'm holding down my shift key to constrain it to square. I'm going to draw a square that's about 35 pixels high. To turn this square into a triangle, making sure it's selected, I'm going to go to Object, Convert Shape, Triangle. And now I'd like to give it uh, a color. So making sure my fill box is on top over here, I'll choose RGB blue. And I notice it looks kind of pointy and I, I really want it to have rounded corners. So I'm going to go back to my object menu and choose Corner Options. I'm going to leave this locked and change the corner shape to rounded and make it five pixels. Okay. Now if you click off, you can see that's got a nice rounded corner now. So the next thing I want to do is rotate it around to the right so it'll be pointing to the right. And if I select it and just hover outside the shape till I get that double headed arrow, I can hold down my shift key and that will constrain it to a 90 degree angle and just drag it around like that. Uh, just to make sure everything stays aligned I'm going to um, pull a rule down here. So this is going to be my go to next page button. To create my go to last page button I'm going to hold down my shift and option keys. I'm just going to drag this out to make a copy. Now I need to have the little narrow rectangle here to show uh, that it's the go to last page button. So I can go back to my rectangle frame tool here and just draw 
a little narrow rectangle. And you can see that that green line pops up to let me know that it's the same height. So that's nice of InDesign. Well, I've got that selected. I can choose my eyedropper tool and I'm just going to eyedropper. And that copies the rounded corners and the color to my new shape. Next, I want to copy these two buttons to create my go to first page and I go, my go to previous page button. So I'm going to, with my uh, selection tool, I'm going to select both of those. And I want to flip them. And if I just go up here and choose flip horizontal, you can see it flips it, but it doesn't make a copy. So I'm going to go Command Z. And I'm going to hold down my Option key. And I'm going to click the flip horizontal button and that creates a copy. Now I can just hit my left arrow key a few times to separate those. Now I'm ready to program my buttons. And if you have created buttons in another program like Dreamweaver, I think you're going to be amazed by how easy it is to do it in InDesign without having to write a single line of code. So we're going to first do the go to last page button and going to my selection tool, I'm going to just select those two shapes and very first thing I need to do is group them. So I'm going to go to object group. This is very, very important because I have to make sure that InDesign sees these two buttons as one object so it will treat them as one button. Now I'm going to go uh, up here and find my Buttons and Form panel. I'm going to choose that. Let me just tear it off here. And with that group shape selected, I'm going to change it to a button. You can see that changed uh, the way the selection looks, and there is a little icon down here indicating that it's a button. And I want to give it a meaningful name, so I'm going to call it go to, go to Last Page. It's a good idea to always name your buttons after their function. And uh, I'm going to leave the, release, the event at Go uh, On Release or Tap. And I'm going to here click the little plus and add an action. And right here, the action I want is already pro programmed in for me, so I'm just going to choose Go to Last Page. Now I want to add a rollover state so that the user, when they mouse over the button, will have some indication uh, that it's an active button. So I go with the button still selected, I go down here and click on Rollover. Now I need to do something to make this button look different. So if I uh, go up here, for example, and um, I can just change the tint of the button, perhaps, to, hmm, say, 44%. And that looks good. And um, I could even give it a drop shadow. Let's try that. Go up here and choose Drop Shadow. Make sure preview is checked, and I go, oh, whoa, that's way, way, way too much. So I'm going to reduce the distance a little to about four pixels and cut back the opacity. So it's just kind of more subtle. So that's good. Now before I go on to program the other buttons, I'm going to create an object style so that I can uh, add the rollover state easily to my other buttons. So I go to Object, uh, to uh, Window Styles, Object Styles, and with that selected, I'm going to choose New Object Style. I'm going to call it Rollover, and click OK. Okay, very good. Now I'm going to pr uh, program the Go to Next Page button. So I select that. I choose Button. I name it Go to Next Page. Leave the event here. Add the action. 
go to next page, add the rollover state, and just choose rollover. And then return it to its normal state. And I noticed that I forgot to return this one to its normal state, so I'm going to go back to do that. That's a very easy error to make. So uh, just showed you how to correct that. So now I'm going to do the go to first state button. And you'll remember it's very important that I group these two items. So I'm going to group them and go to object group. Now I'm going to go to my buttons panel and change the type to button. Call it go to go, go, wait, go to first page. Add the action. Go to first page. Add the rollover state using my style rollover. And go back to the normal state. This is kind of a repetitive process. Uh, and we're going to do our go to previous page button now. Type button, name, go to previous page, action, go to previous page, rollover state, style rollover, return the button to normal. Now, when we zoom in on this, we can see that all of our buttons have the little button icon indicating that they are truly buttons. So what we want to do now is test it. In order to test it, I have to add some pages to my document because I now only have one page. So let's insert some pages. I'm going to insert, say, four pages to my document. And in order for me to know that this has worked, I'm going to have to have something different on every page. So I'm going to stay on my master page here. I'm going to draw a great big text frame and change the type size to 72 point. And I'm going to go to Type, Insert Special Character, Markers, Current Page Number. Because I did that on master page A, now every page is going to have a number on it indicating what page I'm on. So that allows me to test my button now, uh, or my buttons. <clears throat> so I'm going to go to um, Window, Interactive, SWF Preview. And this brings my preview window up. I'm going to select here, preview the entire document, not just the page. I'm going to hit the play button. And now I can roll over all of my buttons. And I can see that my rollover state works. And I can go to, go to last page. That takes me to page 5. Go to first page, takes me to page 1. Go to next page, takes me to page 2. And go to previous page takes me to page one. So that's working just perfect. I noticed one little thing in the preview uh, button that interactive page curl is, is, is engaged and that's sort of annoying me. So let me show you how to take show uh, how to turn that off. You go to uh, edit preview settings here and just unclick include interactive page curl and then go save settings and hit play again. And now that interactive page curl is gone. So I can test my buttons. They're working great. And um, we've done what we set out to do.